on the latest bulletin of the angry astronaut. In a surprise move, SpaceX has filed a motion to become a co-defendant with the FAA against a group of environmentalist organizations that are trying to change the nature of SpaceX's permit in the Boca Chica region. Why is SpaceX making this move and why now? All of this and more coming to you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us here on The Angry Astronaut. So, in a surprise move, SpaceX has decided that they want to get involved in this lawsuit between a group of environmentalist agencies, some of which are very powerful, and the FAA. This is something that SpaceX was not doing prior to this, being content to let the FAA defend itself. However, in an interesting move on Friday, SpaceX filed a motion with federal Judge Carl Nichols, who currently has jurisdiction over this case, to be listed as co-defendants. This complicates the case a bit, and it's something that's not being opposed by the plaintiffs. Why would SpaceX make a move like this, and why at this time? And while I have your attention for a moment, I'd like to make a quick clarification on a report that I made yesterday over the departure of Mel Quinn from Spaceport Cornwall. The Spaceport has since reached out to me and assured me that a replacement for Mel is going to be found as soon as possible and that the Spaceport's goals and objectives remain unchanged and that they are going to take maximum advantage of all of the new relationships that Mel and her team have developed over the last several years. That being the case then, I think there's a lot of reason to be optimistic about the future of the spaceport. Okay, on to SpaceX. So just to be clear, what SpaceX has done here is file a motion to intervene under the Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 24A-2, which requires courts upon timely motion to permit anyone to intervene who claims an interest relating to the property or transaction that is the subject of the action and is so situated that disposing of the action may impair or impede the Movant's ability to protect its interest unless existing parties adequately represent that interest. Uh, yeah, there's your legalese for the day. But SpaceX is essentially saying that our interests are at risk here and we deserve to be a part of this process. Now, this is something that SpaceX may have been hesitant to do originally because the FAA should be able to defend itself quite well under these circumstances, claiming that the PEA that they originally issued for SpaceX in the Boca Chica region was sufficient in order to protect the environmental interests of surrounding wildlife refuges. And there's a lot of reason for them to have believed that the federal courts were going to find in their favor because Jar Judge Carl Nichols, appointed by President Trump, has a bit of a reputation for protecting the interests of corporations and business rather than the interests of traditionally liberal concerns like environmental groups. However, that may no longer be the case. It could be that SpaceX received some notification from their people at the FAA that Judge Nichols might have been inclined to require a more thorough environmental study before SpaceX could launch again. And a traditional environmental study could take as long as one to two years or perhaps even longer. As a result, SpaceX filed the following, quote, as the recipient of a license that the FAA approved under the challenged environmental review process and the proponent of challenge launch operations, SpaceX has a direct interest in this action. SpaceX's ability to protect that interest would be impaired if its request to intervene were denied. The FAA, as a government agency charged with considering broader public interests, cannot adequately represent SpaceX's private 
interests. SpaceX thus satisfies the requirements for intervention. SpaceX went on to argue that, quote, it meets the requirements for permissive intervention because it has claim or defense that shares with the main action a common question of law or fact, specifically that the FAA's environmental review and approval of SpaceX's proposed launch program should be upheld. Moreover, SpaceX's timely intervention will not unduly delay resolution of the matter or prejudice the parties. Counsel for SpaceX conferred with counsel for the parties before filing. Now that's something that needs to be taken into account. In other words, SpaceX consulted with the environmentalist attorneys along with the attorneys with the FAA before they filed this motion. And here's an interesting detail. Although the plaintiffs had no objection with SpaceX intervening, the FAA actually did, at least under Rule 24A, the first justification for SpaceX intervening. They had no position on the rest of the issues, so it's likely, in my opinion, that they're going to be allowed as co-defendants here. But once again, that's hard to determine. If the FAA does not have the same goals in mind that SpaceX does, Judge Nichols might determine that there's a conflict of interest here. But I'm not an attorney, and I have many attorneys in my family that I go to on these sorts of things. But once again, federal law is something that I'm far from being an expert on, so it'll be interesting to see what happens next. Nevertheless, SpaceX is making a very strong argument, at least as far as their immediate interests are concerned, and not only that, the interests of the nation, especially when it comes to the Artemis program. Quote, Starship Super Heavy stands to revolutionize space travel by substantially reducing the cost of accessing space while substantially increasing the mass and size of payloads that can be delivered to space. Starship Super Heavy will allow scientists to focus on previously impossible scientific missions and pursue the fastest, easiest way to get their missions from concept to execution by eliminating the need to miniaturize, reduce mass, and create a system of deployments to fit in smaller launch vehicles. For instance, with its large capacity, Starship could economically put large telescopes and heavy science experiments in orbit and cargo, people, and even colonies on moons and other planets. In fact, NASA chose Starship as its lunar lander in the upcoming Artemis program. This means that Starship will transport crew members from lunar orbit to and from the surface of the moon. SpaceX went on to argue how much they have invested in this site already and how much of a problem any sort of interference from the FAA would represent. Quote, Since the FAA issued the ROD, approving development of the site, SpaceX has invested more than $3 billion into developing the Boca Chica launch facility and Starship Super Heavy launch system. The launch site already has significant infrastructure installations, including a vertical launch area, launch and landing control center and other supporting launch related structures that have now been in use for years. Of course, all of us know this, but at the same time, that's not something that Judge Nichols is necessarily familiar with and something that really needs to be properly argued and represented in court. Something that SpaceX wasn't doing prior to this, possibly because they simply weren't ready to do so, possibly because this took them off guard, they probably expected to be sued directly rather than the FAA suing them, or possibly, as I said before, because things were starting to look grim in the developing case. And there's one more very compelling reason that SpaceX is intervening here. They argue that the FAA is not going to properly represent their interests. Quote, Moreover, the FAA and SpaceX's legal interests in this litigation differ. The FAA may have interests in broadly regulating commercial space operators that do not always align with SpaceX's views about the appropriate, narrow scope of regulation that Congress intended. Thus, even if the FAA 
FAA contests plaintiffs' legal contentions. The FAA's arguments will not necessarily represent SpaceX's interests as a regulated party or its specific business interests in the Starship Super Heavy program at its Boca Chica launch site. For these reasons, SpaceX meets the minimal burden required to show that the FAA's representation may be inadequate to protect SpaceX's interests. I think this is a very important paragraph in this motion. What it indicates is that the FAA may not be looking out for SpaceX right now. They may instead be more concerned about their interests when it comes to regulating spaceflight in the future because if Judge Nichols determines that the FAA acted inappropriately or determines that they need to modify their approach comes to space launches in the future, especially when we're talking about very powerful rockets, that could have a colossal impact on the FAA's operations in the future. What I'm saying here is if the FAA sees their own interests as being threatened by this situation, they may throw SpaceX's interests under the bus in order to protect their right to operate freely in the future. Therefore, if they have to issue a large number of corrective actions to SpaceX before they can launch again. In other words, not a full-fledged environmental study, but rather just a lot of time-consuming corrective actions in order for them to have the freedom to issue these PEAs in the future to other launch providers. I think the FAA will definitely do that. By the way, the FAA has yet to file a plea in this case. The deadline for filing this plea is July 1st. That means that a plea in this case may not even be filed until the end of June. And that being the case, it means that the case may not even be resolved until several months after that. What I'm saying is, is this litigation may very well delay SpaceX's plans for a considerable amount of time, even though I certainly don't want to see that happen. The good news is, Judge Nichols does have a reputation for finding in favor of corporate interests, national interests, rather than environmental interests. However, there aren't a lot of federal judges who are going to allow their personal bias to dictate every decision they make. If Judge Nichols determines that the SpaceX launch on April 20th violated the terms of the PEA, if the debris that spread outside of the region that the FAA anticipated would be affected, if he determines that this is problematic and that corrective actions need to be taken up to and including a full-fledged environmental study, well, personal bias and preferences will only influence a judge so far. The law is the law, and if he determines that the law was violated on April 20th, he's going to have to do something about it. It is, of course, my personal opinion that Judge Nichols is not going to take extreme action in this case. I really doubt that he's going to take action that will require a multi-year delay in SpaceX's plans. There is simply too much at stake here for the nation for the economy, for a wide variety of things. I really don't see how he's going to be obstructionist like that. However, that doesn't mean that he's not going to require at least something from the FAA and therefore something from SpaceX. What that something is going to be has yet to be determined. Please, if you like this content, smash that like, hit that subscribe, also hit those notification bells. Otherwise, YouTube is not going to notify you every time I release a video, especially if YouTube decides that you're not going to like the topic. If you'd prefer to make that decision yourself, please hit those notification bells and check the description for various ways to support my content. And as always, stay angry about space.